Hi friends, I'm Ashley, and welcome to Darling Cottage Diary. Today we are continuing with our spooky estate series. First we started with the Gothic Garden, and then we had the Forbidden Forest, and now we're moving on to the Lurid Library because I am trash. Complete garbage for alliteration and other literary devices. So we're, we're gonna stick with that as long as I can <laughs> keep it going. Um, this paper uh, is the same paper pack that I bought fair and square at Michael's. It just, it said spooky library to me. I love the snakes. And I also, I, it, those of you who are fans of the Hogwarts universe, I, I am a Slytherin, which I think I've mentioned before, but maybe not overly. <laughs> so, and I would think that a Slytherin it would be a big study or very similar to Ravenclaw because they're cunning folk. So anyway, I was really excited to do this room. If you missed the garden and the forest, I will link those above and below. Um, or you can just go back in my uploads and see those pages as well. <laughs> but um, I wanted to have a little window that was overlooking the forest as well just figure in a big kind of gothic estate we would have one of those and I wanted it to look um, I kind of went with this green over overlook um, with a lot of the elements in this not only because the wallpaper has kind of green hints to it with the snake motif but also <laughs> I've mentioned that I live in a swamp, like a literal swamp, and um, inundated with bayous, very humid most of the year. And if you live in a warm, humid environment, you know that there is just this like mossy green film that grows on everything you leave outside, including the side of your house, including your shingles, including anything you leave on your porch, and particularly anything that is fabric or um, paper. So I I had this like thought in my head that maybe this window's glass got broken at some point because we're at this point in our story where we're this dinner guest at a kind of gilded mansion and we start out in the front foyer which is very pretty but then we start getting curious and this you know looking around the house and looking around the grounds and things start getting creepier and we start noticing little details that maybe make us worried about being there too long and so we had we had the the hints of a haunted missing partially transparent lady uh, in the garden and the forest had lots of poisonous spiders and now we're going to have a couple of secrets we're going to uncover a couple of secrets in the library so I, I wanted to, I don't know, feature this like broken window that's also looking out into the forest, so we have some continuity there, but because of it, you know, it's in a wet place, <laughs> and whether it's swampy or warm or cold, it's just they get a lot of misty rain, especially during the fall. And so because of that, the books and the wallpaper and even the window itself kind of gets a little green tinge and the, the wood floorboards have started to get this mossy growth on them as well. And so the green just, just fit with this story I had in my head. Now this ribbon is a 100% cotton ribbon, and I don't know if you've ever worked with it before, but it is not soft like a satin ribbon. It's very, it's almost like really, really thin wood. Um, it feels like it and it behaves like it. So um, like it will break rather than tear. And it is really cool texture to work with. I have some listed in my um, Amazon storefront. It's similar to the same ones like the same designs I have used on here they're slightly different but they're all wood they look kind of like wood grain so um, if you do a lot of pages that are you know housing related or anything if you want something that has a wood texture I highly recommend using the 100% cotton um, ribbon 
And if you're new around here, <laughs> um, you'll notice I'm using a lot of uh, colored calligraphy inks. I work with Ferris Wheel Press a lot and they send me all kinds of different colors. They're gorgeous and um, I, I highly recommend them. I always like them. They're water-based as well, so if they bleed on something, they're a lot easier to clean off than um, any of them that are oil-based and they dry way faster. So here I'm obviously drawing um, some wood grain on top of these mossy <laughs> green uh, floorboards and I just I wanted it to look like not the fancy parquet flooring but just wood floors that had been neglected for too long. The color I'm using is steeped umber. I'm not sure if it's still available. I got this one last fall but it is a brown that has it's a dark brown that has some red undertones and it's really perfect for you know doing kind of like the the darker depressions in drawing and painting wood grain with a lighter brown like um, Oyster Hour or, or another one over the top or the, the workshop. There's a workshop one in the Fairy Tales collection. It's also a nice um, light brown for like the lighter tones of the wood. So the next little extra that I'm creating here is a bookcase. We can't have a library without a bookcase. So this is some wood grain paper that I sent out in Ephemera Club last December. We had an enchanted forest theme and um, everybody got little doors <laughs> made out of like little fairy doors made out of this paper and then I also sent these kind of big. I didn't mean for them to be that big when I ordered them. I didn't have a scale size, <laughs> and uh, but they were these metal brad pieces that kind of looked like pull pull levers. I, oh, the, the post office was really annoyed with me. They sent back like two or three different people saying they wouldn't deliver it because there was something hard inside the envelopes. But you know what? We got it figured out, and it worked out. Everybody got their everybody got their pieces. So um, I am gonna go ahead and take a second to thank Ephemera Club, those who uh, are part of my Patreon, and they support me every month. Um, Abigail, Kathleen, Joanna, Florence, Rebecca, Sasha, Patsy, Teresa, Effie, Kim, Emily, Carly, Carrie, Leprechaun Mom, Crystal, Tracy, Britt, Rebecca, Alicia, Keja. Kenna, Rachel, Denise, W, Jennifer, Ariel, and Rasha. If you're interested in Ephemera Club, there's more details at the link below. And um, we do all kinds of fun stuff. We have a Discord server. I send out uh, both digital and um, physical ephemera every month. We vote on themes. It's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So anyway, um, moving on to this little situation here. I was so excited and proud of myself about coming up with this, of using embossing powder to make this um, this little archway gilded. And then my camera, something happened and it didn't record the powder turning into the embossed, um, the embossed paint or whatever you call it whenever it mel melts together. <laughs> and becomes like the raised paint. I'm so sad because y'all, if you've seen me before, y'all know that I think that's magical, but you can imagine, I, I enjoyed it in the meantime. But <laughs> it did come out perfectly. It came out just this real shiny, um, this real shiny gilded scroll type covering um, embellishment. And everybody in Ephemera Club did get one of those gates. Um, there were some book stickers, some candlestick stickers, all of those were vinyl, so you know you can use them on stuff other than your journals. These book pages, I'm, I can't remember where I got them. It was a long time ago, um, but I use them pretty sparingly because I like them so much. But they're kind of see-through, which you know, for a spooky house, spooky mansion, it's like, oh that's gonna be fun to have like ghost books <laughs> on the on the bookshelf. So anyway, I had I had fun with all the little details on this page. 
So something else I wanted to do with this page was have a secret passageway somewhere that leads to the next page that I'll do either next week or the week after. I know next week is also going to be crazy busy, um, so I'm going to try to keep the series going, but I might take a break and do one of the Real Littles journals. We'll have to see how much uh, days of how much daylight I have to work with um, that I'm not at work. So hopefully I'll be able to get to it. But um, this fabric was also from Ephemera Club and I knew as soon as I found it that I wanted to send it out but as well use it in my own journal as these sinister curtains. So we're going to have a bookcase with a secret passage behind it, hence why I pulled those um, those little hinges out of the walnut and I also wanted the curtains to look like maybe something bad happened there and it was cleaned up but it wasn't cleaned up quite well enough and this point in our journey we're gonna start seeing a few more sinister details rather than just being creepy and spooky because the deeper into this house we go the more unnerved I want to be so that is, that is our goal for spooky season. Hopefully by the time we get to the last room, uh, the weekend of Halloween, it's going to be, it's going to be particularly gruesome. But even, even with having the little bit of splatter going on here, I really wanted it to look like somebody had come in and tried to make everything go away, make everything pretty. And, you know, whatever happened there is this terrible family secret. And, um, you know, just how many stories are there about very powerful, wealthy families who have had really sinister secrets and they've been covered up because of the power and wealth. And that it kind of this whole room was a little bit inspired from um, we've always lived in the castle if you've seen that movie and or read the book and it also kind of has a green haze over the whole movie but it's very similar in that these bad th there was just uh, layers and layers of mystery to uncover and that's what I wanted to bring forth here anyway <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this I look forward to next week I'm thinking we're gonna be in the kitchen next week and find out what happens behind this uh, this little cross space behind our bookshelf. I hope you have a wonderful week. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I will see you next week. Thank you for being here. Bye.